Okay, welcome back everybody. Here we are with the Lawn Ginger. That's me. One of my favorite people. I've known him for years, worked with him for years. <laughs> Great guy. It's been a good journey. <laughs> I love it. And he has a YouTube channel, if you don't know. It's called the Lawn Ginger, is that right? The Pest and Lawn Ginger. The Pest and Lawn Ginger. It's yep. a great channel, a lot of great hints on it. So tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you get into lawns? Ooh, man, I've been in the industry just about 17 years now. It's been a long time and you really just have to really enjoy it. Um, 10 years ago, they put me in charge of the lawn assessments and I just started noticing little patterns and I really had to start from scratch because I was a pest control guy, right? right? Yeah. So I had some good information, good knowledge on uh, pesticides and a little bit here and there for herbicides. Um, a buddy of mine had uh, 20 years experience in landscaping, so he kind of spoon fed me a few things here and there and that's kind of how I got my start. But as I got in these lawn assessments, I started noticing different patterns and colors and different uh, problems, if you will. And it took me a while to solve some and I started looking online. There really wasn't any way to diagnose them correctly. I noticed all isolated instances had either a uniform pattern or a random pattern. Right. Uh, and then they had a specific color to them, whether it be white, yellow, lime green, uh, brown, so on and so forth. Um, and then we get into a water saturation test. Now watering is 99% of your success. Say that again. So watering is 99% of your success. Yes. Starting out the gates, watering will be a do or die situation with all lawns. The water saturation test, I use an AMS soil probe and I probe the soil. Okay, in just a little bit, let's, you know, I just kind of want you to show them how to use that soil probe. I've done it a little bit on my videos, but I'd love yeah, to see Yeah, we'll how get there. Do. We'll okay. definitely get there. So, now, one thing that I really liked about, that I've seen on your videos, is you have this method of watering, starting early in spring. Yep. That helps, so you don't have to water as often. I know a lot of people, you know, when I talk to people, they're saying, it's not water, my lawn isn't dying because of water, I water every day for an hour. So what happens is, is you have to have a reservoir of water in the soil six to eight inches deep. Now s explain that a little bit better because of, when I first heard you say that, I didn't get it. What is a right. reservoir of water? The one thing that I preach is, is how deep are your roots? So right. okay, good. Kentucky bluegrass, the roots are supposed to be around six to eight inches. Okay, that's what I thought too. Six to eight inches uh -huh. is where they, is where you're That's where at they're the best. supposed to be. now. My experience, the roots across the valley, we're lucky, lucky, if they're two and a half to three inches. And why is that? Why are they not reaching their optimum? That's because everybody's daily watering. Okay, everybody, listen to Mr. Ginger, who knows what he's saying. Say that again. Everybody is what? You shouldn't be daily watering. Do not daily water. Yes. So it's got to struggle a little bit, but this is where people get really confused. You can't have a fight if there's no water below it. Okay. So the issue is, is I water my lawn, and we'll go out and take a look, but I water my lawn two to three times a week. During the hot months, I'm three to four, depending on my area. My backyard is long, it's three inches, so I'm only watering three days a week. My front yard is about an inch to an inch and a half, um, and I'm watering it four days a week right now. And you've got to see the color of that. We're going to go out there in just a minute show you the color. But the reason why we only water two, three days a week is because the first two punches, right, to a perfect lawn is increased carbon, increase oxygen. Right. Carbon oxygen, one, two. If you're watering daily, you're suffocating your oxygen. Right. Exactly. So, so then the roots don't want there. to go deeper because if they go too deep, number one, there won't be water. And they, you know, if there's too much water, they will suffocate. But they can't breathe. And they can't breathe. They so can't they, breathe. in essence, they curl back up and then they contribute to your thatch layer. Now, a lot of people have misconceptions on what a thatch layer is. A thatch layer is a root ball. Right, exactly. Just slightly below and slightly above the surface of the soil. Okay. So not to be confused with dead grass and all you guys mulching out there improperly, shame on you. That is not <laughs> thatch. That is just dead grass. And you need to go watch his YouTube channel. Do you have one of your videos that you can suggest that really goes in depth on between you know, thatch and uh, debris that you can recommend? 
Yeah, so I, I have one video called Do You Even Mulch Bro? Okay, I'm going to look that one up and I will link that here so that you but, can go watch that. Um, okay. There's a couple on This Is My Lawn where I really go in and I, I have um, a couple of videos. One is uh, one of my one of my top videos has to deal with the difference between aeration and power raking. Okay, I love that. So I'll link those two. So you can really see the difference that. between thatch yeah. and just yeah. dead grass. I'm a traditional landscaper and when he first started talking about dethatching, it made my teeth get set on edge because, you know, traditional knowledge is you don't need to do that your lawn, it's actually harmful. Yeah, a lot of but, misnomers. A lot of misnomers. But you But that's actually watch. true though. Yeah. You should never dethatch your lawn. You shouldn't have to because if, you should be watering If correctly. you pull the actual thatch yeah. out of your lawn, that's your lawn that's you your have lawn. zero nutrients. That's why I said the dead grass is not thatch. It's dead grass. Right. And you need to remove that dead grass because it becomes a barrier. And it looks like you're dethatching your lawn, and sometimes even Ginger here calls it thatching, dethatching the lawn. Well, yeah, Every it's it's frustrating because the machines are called thatching machines, even yeah. though that's not what they do. But anyway, back to watering. <laughs> yeah. You want to water deeply and infrequently. Let's get into that. So actually first, let's talk about the reservoir. How do you build the reservoir? Why do you build the reservoir? And then how does that contribute to being having to water less? Okay, so this is where everybody gets a little frustrated because they don't understand the technology, right? right. You're, you're fighting evaporation exactly. and you're fighting transpiration. So just like we transpire through our armpits, right. your grass is, has a certain amount of transpiration that's occurring. It's what, we're in August now? Yeah, it's beginning of August. So just our evaporation rate where we're at, which is really dry, we're one and three quarters inches. So. I do a water output test to figure out how much water is actually coming out of the sprinklers. That is good. I'm going to go over that in another video. Yeah. yeah. And so then I am watering one and three quarters to two inches per week. So you're replacing the water that you're losing. But the issue is I just want to replace the evaporation. Right. I don't want to replace any, I, I don't want to shove more water. In. Exactly, because you, if you water properly in the spring, you have a reservoir there already. Right, not to be misunderstood. So reservoir does not mean sopping wet. Right, so It just that means reservoir? that we have an isolated amount of water six to eight inches deep. So we'll go over this a little bit with my soil probe. I put the soil probe in the lawn. I want to see my probe go about six to eight inches deep. I want to see it visibly moist, not dry. The problem with drying your lawn out, and the problem is when the soil is dry, you don't get the mycorrhiza, which is a beneficial bacteria that's solely in charge of transporting nutrients through the plant. The, the plant doesn't just suck nutrients in, contrary to what people believe. It's beneficial bacteria and it's microbial action. So you have to have that. The first thing it needs is water. And just like any bacteria, it's just sitting there like a little virus and replicating itself. So the more beneficial bacteria, the more mycorrhizae you have, the be more beneficial the ecosystem, it all pulls together, but it all starts with water. Okay. So six to eight inches, not too wet. And how do you get that six to eight inches? Because you, just... you don't water that an hour every day to get that. Right? Yeah, right? No, it already has to be there. We're just replacing the evaporation. So if your lawn is already bone dry, you may have to daily water for five days. I mean, think about this, just food for thought. Average system is like 0.6 to 0.75 inches per hour. Oh, so you may need to water quite a bit for a few days. So if, you're, if your area, let's say you have an isolated area that's bone dry, you may be 10 hours behind on water. Okay. Just to get back to six inches. Now that doesn't mean that necessarily you have to do that all in one sitting. Right. Because the soil's only gonna accept so much before it washes off. As I said, daily watering for an hour a day to get you back caught up yeah. would be the proper thing to do. And then once you get caught back up, you wean back. But it's kind of difficult once you have a lawn that's that's been dehydrated and you're starting back at zero again, you have to be very patient because if you do things too quickly, the wrong time of the day, and this is gonna surprise you though, but I tell people to start watering about six o'clock at night. Okay because if we get a humid front coming in and there's too much water on the top layers, it's gonna give you a fungus. Okay, so that, yeah, you wanna- So that. either really early in the morning at about three or 4 a.m., which water. is the ideal time,
to do that so that way your last station goes off 30 minutes after sunup, it right. burns those top layers off to avoid fungal issues. Okay. But when you're shoving water back in, you may have to do it starting at five or six at night to cool that area off just for maybe a half an hour and then do your main watering the next day. Okay, I love that. So I just wanna go over one more thing and then we're gonna go look at your lawn. But what I like to do in the spring, and uh, the ginger here, he talks about it on one of his videos, is drought stressing the lawn, you want yep. to have your roots go deep. And they don't go deep if it's, you know, if there's too much water down there. They start drowning, so like you said, they'll circle back up. So I will, in the spring, you know, you can't do it on wet springs like this year. <laughs> it's your spring. Well, actually you can, you just do it later in the year. I had to do mine in May. Yeah, I did mine actually in June. So. Yeah, not surprising. <laughs> yeah, so you, you let the lawn start to look like it needs water. It will change color. When you walk across it, you'll see footsteps and you're gonna say, oh no, my lawn's gonna die. Then you water it really deeply. Mm -hmm. Give it a good, you know, I normally water 25 minutes on my regular sprinkler heads. I water it an hour. Get that, you know, push that as deep as I can, push some water down, and then I let it dehydrate again. And then I push the water down again. And then after that, I water it two to three times a week and that's it. Yeah. And, yeah. So anyway, let's go look at the ginger's front lawn and we'll look at his back well, lawn one too. Th one thing that I want to point out though, the point of this exercise is to get rid of fungus. So that helps get rid of fungus Right. Too. So our top two in our area are leaf spot and melting out. They work hand in hand. Okay. And so the point of that is just to push that out before it happens. Now, slightly dehydrating the lawn is a little bit different. We don't want to cause the lawn to go into dormancy stress, right. which is where it goes brown. You just want to see those edges start etching in. Yeah. and be slightly different color than everything else. Yeah, it turns a little bit gray. And like I said, you can in. see the footsteps yep. as you go across. Yeah, but let's go check out yeah, the soil let's go probe. See. Here is the Ginger's front lawn. Now, yeah. it's a little different than your regular lawns. Yeah. A week ago, I had my lawn at one inch and I just scalped, scalped it, like completely scalped it. Um, I usually keep it at one inch, but I had let it grow out to about five inches. You need to watch that video. It's just like shocking to have it look like this. And again. then I scalp it down to here. And this is what we got two yeah, weeks let's show later. You. Let's, let's get in here. And, and this is this. the second time I scalped it. Look at the color on that. So, but yeah, the color is okay. Like, and it's at one inch. So, you know, normally, yeah, yeah, most normal, you know, but homeowners. you can't do that. You can't mow your lawn at one inch. No, I didn't think you could until I watched sure you your videos. Tell give you a quick look on his backyard here. Okay, so we've got party in the front. Oh, no, no, business in the front, party That's in the back. Right. This is more typical lawn length. With poop. Yeah, never mind the poop. Dogs are important. I show people everything, so. Yeah, so anyway, let's, let's talk about watering. How often do you water these again? So the front yard, I'm at four days a week. The backyard, I'm at three. That's amazing. Yeah, so the front yard, I'm doing two inches of the backyard and doing an inch and a, inch and a half to an inch three quarters. Okay, yeah, so the, the shorter the lawn, the, the more you need to baby it, but yeah. you can still have it be green. Well, it's not as long, so right. what happens is, is you're going to get more evaporation. Yeah. So less evaporation on the lawn in the, when it's longer at three inches than when I have it at one inch. Okay. Now, how can you tell if you've got enough water? How can you tell how deep your soil profile is? So you do one of two ways. I like to use a soil probe because then I get to see everything that's going on. But the average homeowner can just use a screwdriver the same way that I use my soil probe. Now I have a soil probe. I know you have a soil probe. Let's pull one out yeah. and let's show them how to do it. Yeah. So here we have a screwdriver. We have a, a probe. Okay. So the AMS soil probe that I like to use is this model right here. It's the 40136. The difference between this and the cheaper one is just this ending is flared and the other one cups in. Mine cups in so, and it makes it a little, a little more difficult this, to push in. Yeah, and I have a tool that actually pushes plugs out. So this tool is great. You can use a standard screwdriver, Yeah. which is what I usually carry in my back pocket because a lot of times I have heavy, hard, compact clay. A lot of people out there freak out. Oh, I got clay. And, but clay is actually really, really good to have because it holds a ton of nutrients. You just have to condition it. Exactly. And so sand, when I get in the sand, I go, because then we have to increase the carbon and humates are the best way. And also increase the watering. Yeah, yeah. well, you, you just have to do more days and less minutes, which is right, what I exactly. don't like to do. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, because people don't get the less minutes part. They'll water more days and keep it up at the same amount of minutes. So, so. commonly, I'm going to go to the greenest part of the lawn just to see where I'm at, um, which 
Honestly, I have a little mushroom over here. So, and I can't remember, but I think my watering went off yesterday. So, as you can see here, I got a mushroom popping up. So this area is probably going to be the most wet. Yeah. So, you can see this is a perfect plug for me. Uh, I didn't hit any rocks down below, but you can see how thick and dense. That is clay. Straight clay. Um, I've shoved in probably, I don't know, I think 150 pounds per thousand square feet of uh, calcium this year. Oh, wow. Kind of open it up to allow the water to pass a little bit easier, but you can see it's malleable, hard, compact clay. So yeah. the last thing you want to do is to ever let this dry out. Now, a couple of things, if I can get this out, that I like to show people is the, uh, the thatch. Let's see here. And the, the roots are so strong. You can see I've got actual roots over six inches under. That's doing really well. But yeah. if you look at my root bases, especially right there, you can see the tip ends are white. And that's the change that I like to see with the fungus. The beneficial fungus and the mycorrhiza is actually kicking now. Oh, good. Okay. I didn't so, know that. I didn't know that's how you could tell. Yeah, most people's roots are going to be just brown and all browned yeah. out. So we'll just take this off. But this right here is your thatch layer. It's actually the spongy accordion root ball. Yeah. Now, a lot of people with lawn aeration, they want to know, hey, should I remove my plugs? Well, when you remove your plugs, this holds a ton of nutrients. And this is where most of your miners and your micronutrients right. sit. But man, this makes me Look stoked. Look at how long those roots are. Yeah, but you can see how dense they are and yeah. how many and how coupled they are. So what you're doing is absolutely working. This oh, is, yeah. This is the, the proof. If you want to go you know, prove to yourself that whatever you're doing on your lawn is working, go out, pull out a plug and look at the roots. Yes. And so, but look at the tail endings on this. Yeah. That's the bacillus that does that. Okay. It, it causes it to flare and to spread. And so I've got a few organic things going on, but you can see it's really happy. You take that screwdriver. Oh, That's what we need. Over here. Take that screwdriver with just a medium push. You can do the same thing at home. Yeah, so this is, if you don't want to buy the soil probe, you can use just a screwdriver. A, just a medium push. A guy like me, I could shove it through all I want. I just want to see organically what it's going to do. And Look how that slides right and in. And then you couldn't see it on camera, but it just starts to stop just right below before. Yeah, this screwdriver isn't yeah. quite long enough to do then exactly. you're just going to measure it with your finger. So yeah. And normally what I do is we go over to the lawn like my neighbors where he's got some obvious drought stress issues. Let's go over there and look. And At another lawn. As you can see, it's not the same color as the ginger's lawn. And this is drought stress. So we're going to show you what that looks like. So first of all, again, we want to go to the greenest section, just see what normal is. So and that's would, a good point. This would be his greenest section right here. And as you can see, again, optimal levels I'll show you the condition of his roots they're just brown okay so there's the difference you can see the difference there it's not quite conditioned how i like it the bacteria yeah. is not quite flowing but he has a history of drought stress so, okay so here is the screwdriver uh, i hit a rock and sometimes that's going to happen yeah and you can tell it's a rock because it you know it, it makes a noise and it's just hard medium push goes and it goes down in. just the same Okay. Perfect. Okay. So here we are with the ginger again in his neighbor's backyard. We've got some drought stress. Let's show you what that looks like with the soil probe. Now I probably would not be able to get the probe in there because I do not have the size. Uh, here's what I want you to look at, right? So we do have technically about an inch of water and then it is just dust. Okay, so if you think you haven't, you're watering enough, you need to be able to assess whether, you know, if you don't have a soil probe, you can even use a shovel. But you've got to see how deep that water is going. Look at that. So it's just dust. So I have seen people who think that they're watering enough. They're watering every other day or every two days. Let me show days. the screwdriver. Yeah, let's go. And it just, it really, same, same area. for some reason, is not penetrating into the soil. 
a moderate push. And it's not and going what I'm in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure it out. And you'll notice, same length. Yep. So there's no, there's really no difference. It's just one you get a visual, and one you don't get as much of a visual. You just have knowledge, water knowledge. And water works. knowledge is vastly important. Yep. Don't guess. Have the knowledge. Now the screwdrivers I like, I get them from Harbor Freight. They're like two and a half feet long, and they're a little okay, bit perfect. wider. Um, the reason why I like that is because the density around and the diameter is thicker. So yeah. you're not going to go down as far, you know, uh, right. as if it was skinny. So you get a more precise reading as you would this, you know, three quarter inch diameter. Perfect. Pay attention to your watering. That is very important. We're going to cover more on watering this week. But anyway, thank you again. Yeah, yeah. And if Appreciate anybody it. out there tells you you can't do it, try it. Yeah, do him. That's the story of my Listen life. Listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you and have a wonderful Garden Wise See you guys. Adventure. Take it easy.